So today we're going to be installing a Thermosphere microelectric boiler at this hot water point in the Thermosphere offices. Down in the bottom left corner we've got an old cold water supply and a connection to a water cooler but we're not going to be using either of those today. Here we've got our dedicated 40 amp supply which is connected to this isolation switch and it's fed from an RCBO back at the distribution board. This is the existing cold water supply and we've taken a T off of that and it's ready to connect up to the microelectric boiler. In the back of the instructions, there's a handy marking template which you can use to mark all your fixing holes. So line it up nice and level and go ahead and mark the holes. Just be aware that you need to leave adequate clearance for the plumbing and electrical connections. It's a good idea to drill pilot holes before inserting the fixings. Because it's a 40 amp power supply, the cable is quite thick, so you need to drill quite a big hole. In this case, we've used a 25 mil bit. Before you can install a microelectric boiler, you need to take the cover off. And to do that, you need to remove these two screws underneath the unit. Pop the case open and carefully unplug the ribbon cable that connects the display to the PCB. This is the cable entry point. This one's already cut because it's been used in a test installation, but when you get yours, this will be intact. All you need to do is snip the end off with a sharp blade or scissors. And this is now ready to be fixed to the wall. The first thing you need to do is make sure the isolation switch is off so that you don't get electrocuted. Next, pull the power supply cables through the hole ready to be connected to the microelectric boiler. Pull the power supply cable through the gland and offer the boiler up to the wall ready for fixing. Next, grab your mounting screws and fix one in each corner. It's really important that you don't drill any extra holes in the casing of the microelectric boiler because this will void your warranty. The next thing to do is make the electrical connections. You simply need to connect the live, earth and neutral wires into the corresponding terminals on the PCB. Make sure that each terminal is done up nice and tight to avoid any loose connections. You also need to make sure that the board earth wire is securely connected into the earth terminal. This makes sure that the board, the brass fittings and the water is all completely earthed. Once you've done all the electrical connections, the next thing to do is put the case back on. First, you need to plug the ribbon cable into the PCB and then pop the case back on. Tighten up the two screws under the unit to hold the case in place. The first plumbing connection you need to do is the cold feed. We've used a ball valve on the cold feed to make sure that it can be isolated. Make sure this is closed, otherwise you will get wet. The cold inlet is on the right hand side of the microelectric boiler. We've used PTFE tape on the brass fittings to make sure they're nice and tight. Make sure any push fit connections are pushed in properly and use two spanners to tighten all of the brass fixings. Next we need to connect the hot flow. This connects to the outlet on the left hand side of the microelectric boiler. This is the pipe that we will eventually connect up to the hot feed under the tap. Use a pair of spanners to make sure that all of your plumbing fittings are nice and tight. Connect the hot feed from the microelectric boiler to the hot tap. We've used another ball valve here to make sure that the hot water can be isolated for maintenance. Use two spanners to make sure that all the fixings are nice and tight. When you've done all your plumbing connections, you can fit pipe clips to hold all of your pipe work neatly in place. Make sure the power is turned off, disconnect the cold feed, flush the cold pipe work just to make sure that there's no debris hanging around in any of the pipes, especially if you've been soldering copper pipes. Close the ball valve and reconnect the cold supply. Now we need to flush the system through, open up all of the ball valves, open up the hot tap and let it run for two minutes. This will flush cold water through the whole system and allow you to check the leaks. Tighten up any fittings if you need to. This will also purge any air out of the microelectric boiler. Once you've flushed the system through, we need to check the inlet filter for any debris. To do this, turn off the ball valves and disconnect the cold feed from the microelectric boiler. Check the inlet valve for any debris and remove it if necessary. Reconnect the cold supply to the microelectric boiler. When everything's connected again, we need to test that the unit's heating so you can open up all the ball valves and turn on the power. 
When you turn on the power, the display will come to life and you'll see the slow green flashing light. This means the unit is on and on standby mode. You can now set your temperature using the up and down arrows and we're going to go ahead and set this one to 45 degrees. Next, we're going to turn on the hot tap and leave it running for three minutes to purge any air out of the system. This also primes the unit for the first use. You can tell the unit's heating the water when the green LED is flashing fast. The microelectric boiler display shows you the set temperature and also the flow rate in litres per minute. You can see we're getting 45 degree hot water at around 5.9 litres per minute. Here we've used our thermal camera to show you the cold water going in and the hot water coming out. The cold pipe is the dark blue one on the right hand side and the hot pipe is the bright yellow and orange one on the left hand side. As you can see we've got continuous hot water flowing at around 45 degrees. After the three minutes you can turn off the hot tap and the system is primed and ready to go. When you finish the installation it's really important to fill in all the warranty information for the homeowner. This will allow them to register their warranty online. You'll need to fill in all of your details and also the details about the product you've installed including the part number, serial number, details about the supply circuit and the water temperature set. And that's it, you're done. Another top class Thermosphere installation. And if you're a Thermosphere Connect member, don't forget to upload your invoices to claim your rewards. Thank you.